Uh, one thing I love about preaching the book of Ephesians is that um, it's doctrinally rich uh, and comprehensive, but a lot shorter than Romans. <laughs> and, and I actually think it's, I think it's, it's a preacher's dream because it is, uh, it's something, you can really cover every single verse and, and not spend years on it. And yet, it, it to get through it all, it, it is almost like a, it's almost like a catechism. It's it just it's so comprehensive, and that's one of the reasons I love. It. That's the, to me one of the joys of it. Yeah, the uh, the big things at the front end are spoken in a way that endear me to them because I think Ephesians one six twelve and fourteen, all of them say that he predestines, elects, adopts unto the praise of his glory, unto the praise of his glory, unto the praise of his glory. Once you get done with those 14 verses, if you hit those three notes, people really have their world turned upside down, yeah. if, if they're listening. I've preached through it twice at our church, and in both, both times it has sorted out our understanding of church. It's, it has reoriented the community to God's eternal plans to unite all things unto Christ. Yeah. And I love, I, I, it took me a long time to realize that Ephesians 6 at the end is not an add-on. It's actually the climax of the letter, that the triumph of Christ on the cross is displayed in the gathering of the church, like a, like a trophy cabinet witnessing in the heavenly realms to the victory of Christ. And I think we were, when we understand that spiritual warfare is not something weird, but hanging on to gospel convictions uh, in the church, in the unity of the church, we proclaim the victory of Christ. Have it's a you, thing. either of you, found anything more to the point with regard to, say, ethnic reconciliation than 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 two thirteen following? No. Uh, no. I mean, I think that's just a go-to place. Yeah. There's other places that you can go to to sort of supplement, fill it out. But it, it, if I, if I had to choose one text, it would have to be there. It have to be. And you think if you if you started with Romans, you think the beginning of chapter two is the key issue. Mm -hmm. But actually, it's the second half where the unity of the nations in Christ and the administration of this mystery that through the cross we're reconciled to God and to one another. That is the great victory of, of, of the Christ and the great demonstration that God's fulfilling his eternal plan to bring all things together under Christ. It's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful, I think, central section. Right, to right. It, what makes it so distinct there is because the, the, the reconciliation this way is in the cross. You, you can't, do an, you can't do a social end run around the cross in Ephesians to say it's, uh, Christianity is all about getting people together in peace. It's, it's about getting people together in, in Christ the and therefore in peace. Yeah. Yeah. I think one of the challenges is something that uh, you've alluded to, and that is to see the unity of it all because it's, uh, there's so many rich subjects. So, oh, there's predestination. There's uh, the doctrine of the church. There's the gospel. You know, we were dead in trespasses and sins. Um, there's a, there's something on marriage. There's something on, mm -hmm. and and you can, and I have, preached it as a series of almost volumes mm -hmm. uh, on different subjects instead of looking at the of how it all hangs together.